Roller in a band playing a game called Quarter Boy Plus. It was made by a YouTuber called Don't Be Touch. I uh, highly recommend you go subscribe to him. He makes pixel animations. I've been subscribed for a while. He's just getting a million subscribers. Anyways, uh, the reason I wanted to play this game is because it's really close to Warrior Wars, which is one of my favorite game series of all time. Uh, the series actually started the first game. It was started as a mini game in a game called Mario Artist Polygon Studios, exclusive to the Nintendo 64 disc drive, which I believe stayed in Japan and never came out in the United States. So you have to use it again and emulator to play it. But I saw a video on the internet where someone was playing that and I thought it looked like fun, so I ended up trying it out. Uh, you can really see the similarities it had to the rest of the series, and I guess this mini game, they were happy with the results, they went on made the whole series, so. And they made the first game, Mega Micro Games, that was on the Game Boy Advance. People still like it a lot, I think it's alright, I think it's definitely held back by how similar a lot of the micro games are. Like, a lot of them, if you just go through and count how many of them involve pressing the A button at the right time, I feel like it's like probably half of them, but it's at the foundation, you know, like there's a lot of things they have to have to make a good uh, game in the series, like I've always said there's three things, one of them is the pace has to have a really quick pace, and after you play certain amount of games it gets faster and faster, which is what happens in this game I'm playing now, but you have to have a like, good flow as well, like the transitions between the games and then the little like things in between showing your score. That has to be like seamless, which is another thing that the series is good for. And then most importantly, you have to have good micro games. And I feel like the first one just doesn't have the best. And there's a third aspect, the game has to be pretty like the series have like a trademark weirdness to them, like with the characters and the cutscenes and sound effects. That's something that not many others can really replicate. But after that, they made the second game, it was called Mega Party Games, it was on the GameCube, and it's okay. It kind of, I think, the thing that holds back is you play it for multiplayer, like you're not going to go and play that game for the single player, so it's pretty much just a copy of everything from Mega Micro, but not as good. But I mean, it's still a good game, like you have some people you can get together with, it's pretty good. Uh, I like it. it has, I really like how weird it is. They really went far with that. But after that, they got a real sequel. It's called Twisted. And that's one of, I think it's one of my favorite games of all time, probably. Like, the game, the, the way you control it is you actually have to tilt your, the cartridge and have a little motion sensor in it, which, for the time, was pretty special. The unit DS didn't have a motion sensor. It, was, it wasn't until the 3DS that they had one. But, when you, uh, you tilt the con entire console, the entire game, but we to control the games. And it kind of seems like it would be gimmicky, but it actually works out really well. It has a lot more variety to the games, there's a ton of side content. The games are still pretty weird. So I think it's definitely the highlight of the series, and I recommend you play it if you play it any later. And after that, there was Touched. I think Touched is the worst name on game series. I think. It just doesn't feel, it feels kind of off. It kind of copies everything from Twisted, but it just feels like a lot slower. Like, I think the boss stages, which I talked about before, but I think like the boss stages from Touched Onwards aren't that good. And in that game especially, they're all like too long and it reveals the pace, which is one of the important things. All the games kind of end up feeling similar to me, since you use like the stylus for all of them. Not to mention they have an entire stage where you only use the microphone, which is just like not really fun to play. I don't know whose idea it was. But anyways, it's like still a fun game, it's just like my least favorite main one. But after that then there were smooth moves for the Wii, and people like that one a lot, and I see why. I think it's 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 probably still not my favorite. Like I don't think it's in the top three. Or no, I would say it's third best. It has like a good pace, it has a good selection of games because of how many ways you can hold the controller. I think the things that hold it back though is because it uses only like motion controls, sometimes it does kind of feel a little hard to control. Like it's definitely the only one where you feel like you'll lose some games due to the controls messing up. But 
it's still like it's definitely the weirdest game I'm sure I like like every single game has like weird animations and like stuff in the backgrounds. So that aspect's really good. So after that then they had DIY or no, I think it was Snack Snacks. It was for the TSI. That was what they had before like the eShop and stuff. And that game uses the camera that the DSi had and I never had a DSi and I had a DS Lite and more or less snap, it just does not work consistently and that's like the worst part about it. And even then it only has like 20 micro units, so it's kind of just meant more as like a tech demo instead of like the next big entry. So it's easily the worst one in the series just because it doesn't work 50% of the time that you play it. But like, it has potential at least. I think mean, there's like games worse than that, probably. Uh, and then after that, there was two, it was DIY Do It Yourself. That was for the DS, and there was also DIY Showcase, which is WiiWare for the Wii on the eShop. And I like DIY a lot. It gets used to the stylus to like draw the assets in free run games, and the programming for it's actually a lot more complex than I thought it would be, which is nice, like you can do some kind of complex stuff with it, but, uh, but yeah, it's not really a mainline entry though. Like you get a few micro games where you only get like, I think 90 opposed to like most of the games which have 200 because it's more like a game where it's just to make a game yourself, which can be fun, but I can see how some people wouldn't like it, but I like the game a lot. And then the other showcase, that one was for the Wii, uh, as I said, I think the, um, thing holding it back is the controls, like even though you get like 40 or like, I don't know, you get a bunch of new games. The problem is you have to control them all using like the remote and like pressing A to replace like tapping on the touch screen and it just doesn't work as well, like it's a lot harder to control. But at least you can um, export all the games from the Wii one to the DS version, which I recommend doing, just because uh, the micro games that like come with it are pretty good still, just because like they're made by the people who made the games and know how to program and stuff. And then after that, I think there was a while, there was like a game called Game and Water, but I haven't bought it, or I haven't played it because it's a hundred dollars I'm not going to spend that much on it. But it's not really a main mind mind anyway, it's just like a mini game collection. I don't think it even has micro games, so I'm just ignoring it. And then it was, I think it was like pretty much like, 10 years without a new mainline one until Gold, which was on the 3DS, and it was kind of part of Turn the Form. It took a lot of, like, it took micro games from all the old ones. I gotta have to hurry up. Uh, yeah, it took micro games from all the old ones. It has a mix of touch controls, tilting, and uh, using the buttons, which is good. Um, it feels a little bit off, it kind of feels like they lost some of the trademark weirdness, but it's still pretty good. Just, it has like some of the most content in the entire series. And then recently, like three years ago, we got Dead Together on the Switch, where the main difference is you control little characters instead to the micro games, and I think it was pretty good, but it's like the second best in the series. Okay, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to do my ranking now. The best one is Twisted. The second one is, I'll do the best to worst. It's Twisted. Uh, get it together, smooth moves, gold, mega micro games, DIY, mega party games, touch, DIY showcase, then snap. Uh, and that's how I rank them. Pretty much though, like, I would say, like, the first six games are good, and then the other, like, the other, um, what is it, four other are, uh, just okay. Anyways, uh, that concludes uh, my review, my retrospective of the Warrior War series. I'll probably maybe make a video where I do sound bomb or something just because it's pretty short and still has a lot of potential anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's all I have to say basically. Oh yeah, Quarter Boy Plus is good too.